fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Aye! It was a commonplace day in Smith's Corners, a typically hot day in midsummer. There was no hint of the disaster that was to strike the town at noon. Old Cal Stevens had spent most of the morning visiting with his friend the sheriff. It was Cal who first noticed a large herd of cattle running ahead of a dust cloud and approaching the main street at a fast clip. Hey, Sheriff, look at all that livestock coming this way. And fast. Come on, Cal, let's get out on the porch. I've posted notices telling ranchers not to drive their stock through town. Dad Rat and I'm going to find out who owns those longhorns. Sheriff, look at them lead critters. That's the Bar J cattle. Jim Blake's. I thought he had lost his cattle to rustlers. He did. Say, they're stampeding the cattle. Stop that shooting, you blame fool! Sheriff! Sheriff, they're stampeding in a purpose! Paging longhorns filled the main street at Smith's Corners, goaded to a frenzy of fear by hard riding men whose guns filled the air with flying lead, driving everyone to cover. Stampede! Get to cover! In the midst of the wild confusion, half a dozen men whose faces were concealed by bandanas rushed into the bank and started shooting. You boys fill the sacks. The rest of you stand ready to shoot anyone who moves. While one group of outlaws looted the bank, four other desperadoes charged into the express office conducted by Ma Healy. What's this mean if this is a robbery? Oh. It is. You. All right, boys, grab that Wells Fargo cash and make it fast. It all happened within a few minutes. The well-organized outlaws struck at half a dozen places and struck hard, then rode away, leaving several people dead and many wounded. Ma Healy had a bullet in the arm, and the sheriff's chest had been raked by lead, and there were many others. The doctor had more injuries than he could handle, and he accepted the welcome help of an unknown Indian who had appeared in town and identified himself as Tonto. It was evening when Ma Healy went to see the sheriff. Come on in, Ma. Evening, Sheriff. Oh, hello, Cal. You still here? I'm back again, Ma. 
Sort of talking things over with the sheriff. Ma, how's your wound? Oh, it's nothing. Did you bandage it yourself? Yep. Now, well, that won't do. Come over here, Tonto. Who's the Indian? You heard me call him Tonto. That's all I know about him. Except he's downright handy with gun wounds. Me look at wound on arm? Oh, you're the one I heard about. Doc said you've been a big help to him today. Ah. Uh. Never mind my arm. I'm all right. Sheriff, what are you going to do about that Brogan outfit? Eh, uh, no use trying to make a case against Clint Brogan. He's too strong. Oh. Say that again, Sheriff. I can't believe I heard you right. It's the truth, Ma. Brogan has organized an outlaw army. He's brought men from half a dozen states and has a stronghold in the Badlands. It's a regular fort. That's right. He's up at the top of a hill in the Badlands, surrounded by 20-foot rocks. He's got guards posted all along the trail so no one can get near his place. Why, with a dozen men, he could stand off an army. So Brogan's going to sit there laughing at us and we can't do a thing about it. A fine, how do you do? Yes, I know it, Ma, but with every man in town, I wouldn't have enough to tackle Brogan's gang. I hate to say it, but Clint Brogan is bigger than the law. Who's that? Oh, that was Tonto, the Indian who was here. He just left. Mm. Left sudden, and he sure started out fast. There was a prison ranch a few miles from the town, but it was unlike most prisons. The inmates were not vicious men, nor were they criminals in the generally accepted sense of the word. Their crime had been desertion from the army. Warden Turnbull and the Lone Ranger were friends of long standing. They had been talking in the warden's home for several hours. It was nearly midnight when the masked man rose from his chair. I think I'd better return to camp. You're worried about Tonto? Well, I haven't seen him for over a week. If you didn't reach the camp, I must try to find out why. Well, do whatever you think best. I hate to see you leave. If you could stay until tomorrow, I could show you some more of the boys who are inmates of this place. Well, I've seen enough to realize that most of them are sorry for what they did. Oh, they deserve another chance. They proved that by the way they behaved when we had a fire. They could easily have overpowered the guards and escaped, but instead they stayed and helped fight the fire. Yes, I heard about that. Furthermore, I don't blame these boys for deserting. Their commandant was a colonel named Smith. An insufferable officer who treated his men like mangy curs. He stripped them of all self-respect and dignity. Is Smith still in the service? No, he was dishonorably discharged for conduct unbecoming an officer. I don't say these boys in prison did right in deserting, but... Well, confounded, I think I'd have done the same thing. I'm going to try to get the powers in Washington to act in their behalf. I think... What is it? I thought I heard a horse. Yes, you did. That's Tonto's horse, and Silver knows it. Well, there he comes. Good. He's riding mighty hard. I wonder what delayed him. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Hello. Me plenty late, Kimosabe. Me sorry. Tonto, you remember Warden Turnbull. How? Hello, Tonto. Glad to see you. Me come through Smith Corners on way to camp. There's plenty trouble. In Smith Corners? Ah. Uh, Big band of outlaws come from hills and badlands. Clint Brogan's gang. You know him? Everyone around here knows about the Brogan gang. Well, Brogan gang starts stampede through town, then start gunplay. In clipped Rob short Bank, sentences, Tonto told about his day in town, the attack of the Brogan gang, and the helplessness of Sheriff Parmalee. The Lone Ranger found it hard to believe that any band of outlaws could so completely overwhelm the law. Tonto, do you mean to tell me that the sheriff admitted Clint Brogan is bigger than the law? That's right. And he speaks the truth. Can he muster every man in town, every man in the county if necessary, to attack that stronghold and wipe out Brogan's gang? No, no. If you knew the nature of Brogan's stronghold, you wouldn't ask that question. He has guards all along the trail from the valley to the top of the mountain. His men could fire from behind the protecting rocks and... Stand off any number of men. Why not hit Brogan when he's out of his stronghold? He comes out only when he's sure of a successful raid. I see. Now that you can stay the night, let's get back to the discussion about my charges here at the ranch. I think I'll leave just as I'd planned to do. But Tonto's here now. You don't have to look for him. Yes, I know. You said you'd stay. Well, that was before I'd heard about the Brogan gang. Now look, my friend, there's nothing you nor anyone else can do about the Brogan gang. Sheriff Parmalee's a good man and he's no fool. He knows enough to admit defeat where Brogan is concerned. I guess the sheriff knows more than I do, Warden. Huh? Come on, Toto. Let's get to camp and make some plans. Ah, me come. You mean you don't know enough to admit defeat by the Brogan gang? Not yet, Warden. The lessons are costly. 
Now, please come back here. Don't be foolhardy. We'll meet again. Doggone it. If that masked man is killed by the Brogan gang, it'll be... Now, if he moves against them, he certainly will be. In their small, well-concealed camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto talked far into the night. They discussed and rejected many plans for bringing the Badland outlaws and their ruthless leader to justice. There was just one plan that held any hope of success, and Tonto frowned on this because of the risk involved. This more dangerous than anything you ever do, Kimisabi. Yes, I know that, Tonto. There's plenty good chance you'd die. Not unless something goes wrong. Well, there's plenty good chance for something to go wrong. Well, it's worth any risk, Tonto. When a good, honest sheriff like Jim Parmalee says that any gang is bigger than the law, something must be done. Oh, what if you die? Tonto, when the day comes that Brogan's kind are bigger than the law, life won't be worth living. You'll act on my plan. Now, I'll tell you and get some sleep. We're going to move at daybreak. The Lone Ranger left his camp at daybreak and rode out across the boulder-studded badlands. After traveling nearly a mile, he started up a long, slow grade toward the craggy mass of rocks that served as a fortress and headquarters for the Brogan gang. As he got its silver up the hill, the trail became more narrow, and the rocks that bounded it were large enough to hide a man on horseback. Suddenly, two men leaped from behind a rock. Hold it, mister. That's the warning. Hold silver. Oh, easy. Get off that horse and don't try any sudden moves. Oh, I know better than that, steady big fellow. Masked, huh? Well, that's interesting. Stand right there and keep your hands on top of your head. I came to see your boss. You see him all right after we've taken away your mask and guns. You hadn't better try that until you find out why I came here. You told us why you came here. You wanted to see Brogan. Yes, I have a message for him. It might be better if I left it here where you would find it. Careful there. Uh, keep your hand on top of your head. Very well. The message is in the pocket of my shirt. Help yourself. <laughs> that trick's too old, mister. I move close to reach into your pocket, then you make a fast play. You grab me and use me as a shield while you turn a gun on Pete here. <laughs> Are you really that afraid of me? We're not afraid of you. You just move your hand slow, pull out that message, and drop it on the ground. And step back. Very well. He said move your hand slow. Just as slowly as you please. How's this? That's better. Here's the message. Drop it. Now move back a couple of paces. Keep him covered, Pete. I'll see what that note says. I'm covering him. He's doggone sure of himself. I think many of your gang must have worn masks at one time or another. Isn't that right? Well, of all... What is it? Listen to this. It's addressed to Brogan. Well, read it. This is to let you know that you're not bigger than the law. Some of your men are already in jail at Smith's Corners. You'll get a fair trial before they hang. The same justice is to be meted out to every one of your gang. Yourself included. Why, you... Who's in jail? No one just yet. But two men will be by the time Brogan reads that letter. Oh, is that so? Well, maybe you'd favor us with a little information before we march you up the hill to Brogan so as you can deliver the message in person. Hmm? I'll be glad to supply any information you want. Which of the boys do you figure will be in Sheriff Parmalee's jail? You two. What? You mean me and Pete? Yes. Ha, 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 ha. That's big talk for a man that's staring down the barrels of two forty fives. <laughs> I wonder what Brogan will have to say about that. We'll know soon enough. Start walking, mister. Ahead of us. Right up the trail. And move fast or we'll shoot your heels off and carry you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After being challenged by two of Brogan's gang on the rocky trail that led uphill to the outlaw stronghold, the Lone Ranger stalled for time as long as possible to give his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, a chance to reach a position close at hand. Tonto had moved on foot and had made no more noise than a shadow. He had used all his Indian cunning and had taken advantage of every sheltering rock. He could hear the outlaws, and he knew that matters had neared a showdown. All right, get going, mister. You heard what Pete said. You got a message for Brogan, you're going to deliver it in person. But my horse... We'll is... bring your horse. You go ahead on foot. But I can't do that. Why, Thunder, I never saw the like of you. Why can't you do it? I told you I plan to put you two in jail in Smith's Corners. Now, I have to do that or the message to Brogan will be untrue. Why, you... If I go up the hill to your boss, it will be practically impossible to jail you. You're two not jailing us. anybody. Now, for the last time, get going. For the last time? No. Brogan told us not to shoot, except as a last resort. Well, this is it. No! Someone back there! That's right! Why are you... When Tonto fired from behind the rock, his bullet smashed against the gun of the outlaw who was about to shoot the Lone Ranger. The other man turned. It was the move the Lone Ranger was waiting for. He leaped ahead and shot his fist out hard. Pete saw his friend staggering from the impact of the masked man's blow. Though Pete's right hand was limp, his left brought a second gun into play. Now get you! Not today! No! Here, Kimasabi. No more shooting, Tonto. We want these men alive. Take that one. You won't get me. Take them. No. There's another one for you. No. And another. No, wait, wait, listen. Not so brave now. Are you? No. Oh, that fix him. The horses oh. are behind that rock. Try them and get them on board. Got to get away from here before the rest of the gang comes to see about the shooting. Ah, uh, Here's a rope for this one. No, 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 no. Haven't you had enough? Oh, oh. Here. Your horses, Kimasabi. This will hold you two for the time being. Oh. Now, Pete, I'll keep my promise and take you and your pal to jail. It was a long way on the dangerous trail from the point at which the guards had challenged the Lone Ranger to the fortress on the top. The shooting had been heard by Brogan, and he dispatched several of his men to investigate. They returned with a message in the Lone Ranger's handwriting. Jake and Pete were gone, boss, and so were their horses. Gone where? Maybe that message will tell you. We found it on the trail. The ground all around was scuffed like there'd been a fight. Why, they have all the downright cussed nerve. You read this, Loomis? Yeah. Two of my boys in jail in Smith's Corners. And that's the law's answer to that raid we made yesterday. That raid was nothing compared to what's coming next. If they think they can threaten me and get away with it, they better think again. We gotta get those two out of jail. We'll get them out. And after that, there won't be no jail standing in Smith's Corners. Call the boys together for a meeting right away. Sheriff Parmalee was in his office with his old friend, Cal Stevens. The two had spent the morning discussing the raid of the preceding day. Well, this time yesterday, Cal, we were sitting here just like this. And five minutes later, things had busted wide open. That's right. Just about 24 hours ago to the minute. <laughs> Sheriff, I hear hoofbeats. Oh, sit down, Cal. That's not another stampede. It's just a couple of horses. I'm going to see for myself. I tell you, Sheriff, I'm downright nervous since yesterday. I... What do you see? Great day. Sheriff, come over here to the window. Look outside. What is it? Four men, one masked and two prisoners. That Indian named Tonto. He's leading the way. Coming in here. Here's two crooks. You'll be sorry for this. Wait, what's that mask mean? These two crooks are more important. You better cut these ropes and turn us loose. I know you. You're the polecat that fired at us. Lock these men up and hold them for trial. They're two of Brogan's gang. Now, hold Lock on. Lock us up and our pals will burn down the whole town. They think they're bigger than the law. Well, who are you? Why'd you bring these men in here? Because they're crooks, Sheriff. They're killers. Jail's a place for them. But I... You'll have no trouble finding men who can identify them. I can, and so can Ma Healy. Ah, uh, me too. Well, Sheriff, what are you waiting for? I, uh... He don't dare uh, jail us. He knows what'll happen. Sheriff, if you know what's good for you, and for this town, you'll cut these ropes and let us get back to Brogan before he starts his attack. If Brogan starts an attack... He'll find more trouble than he can handle. Oh, that's big talk. I don't know what to do about this. I got the safety of the town to consider. You have more than that to consider. Just who are you? Me tell. No, Tonto, wait. No, Kimusabi. Me tell who you are. Then maybe Sheriff, listen. This masked fella, Lone Ranger. What? Lone Ranger. That's who... You hear that, Sheriff? The Lone Ranger's on our side. Jail these men. If Brogan brings his gang, I'll help you meet them. Well, that'll be swell. Brogan will be glad to get you along with a few others in town. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Go on, Sheriff. Put us in jail. See what happens. Well, even with you and Tonto on our side and with every man in town geared to a fight, we'd be outnumbered by Brogan's men. And you're afraid of odds? Oh, well... When your father came here, he found mighty heavy odds against him. And so did his friends who settled this part of the West. Maybe he should have turned back and returned to the East. I... Then you wouldn't have been born a Westerner. You wouldn't have inherited the responsibility of fighting against odds to make this country what your father hoped it would be. Now, listen. Go on, Sheriff. Turn these men loose. Then go to your father's grave. Get down on your knees and explain that you were afraid of odds. Who's afraid of odds? Come here, you crook. Hey. Open that iron door, Cal. We're holding these coyotes for trial. The charge is murder. That's the ticket. You'll pay for this. Our pals will be here. We'll be waiting for them. There. Right. Now, Cal, spread the word to get ready for another attack by the Brogan gang. Say, where's that masked man? Well, him just leave. There he is, mounting his horse out in front. Him got plenty hard drive. Where's he going? I thought he'd stay and help us fight when Brogan comes. <laughs> The Lone Ranger rode at breakneck speed across the plains to the prison ranch and the warden who was his friend. The warden came from the house as the masked man drew his mighty stallion to a halt. Oh, Silver, oh, oh. How are you coming? You're riding hard. Easy, big fella. Yes, and I must talk fast. Yesterday you told me that none of the men in your charge were hardened criminals. Desertion from the army was their only crime. For that, they've all served more than a year. The war is over. Well, I think these men have been punished enough. They should be starting farms and ranches of their own. They should be building homes and developing the West instead of wasting their lives. That's why I wanted your help in securing pardons from Washington. Warden, how far would you trust your prisoners? All the way. You said they were sorry for their desertion. They are. Then let them prove it. How? Give them another chance to fight. What? Rogan's gang is going to attack Smith's Corners again. Turn the prisoners loose to fight that gang. On their word of honor to return here if they survive. Uh, I don't know about that. The authorities give you a lot of leeway. They've let you run this prison ranch as you thought best. They have a lot of confidence in your good judgment. But releasing the prisoners from custody... Brogan I... must be shown that there's law and order in the West. That he is not bigger than this country. This is a chance for those boys who ran out on the army to fight again for their country. Get them together, talk to them, see what they say. The Lone Ranger talked rapidly and convincingly. Then the warden called the prisoners together and spoke with a masked man at his side. It'll be dangerous work, boys. You may go or not as you choose. We can equip you with horses, and I think there are enough firearms to go around. I'm going to give you guns and horses. But remember this. Every man who goes and survives is on his honor to return. You mean to say our word of honor has some meaning? Of course it has. That's why this masked man wants you with him. Your leader will be the Lone Ranger. Hey! Help me in. I'm going. Give me a chance. Let's get the horses. Come on, boys. Follow me. We'll break out the rifles. Hey. Brogan and his men, armed to the teeth and bristling with hatred, rode into town at sunset. The sheriff had spread the word and the townsmen were prepared, but their number was pitifully small and they were inexperienced in battle. They had set up a barricade of wagons, boards and barrels at each end of the main street, but these defenses proved of little value. The gunmen swept into the town from all sides, coming through the rear doors of the stores and houses like a tidal wave. The barricades were torn down so more of Brogan's men could charge in with horses. In the street and on verandas, on balconies and even inside buildings, there was hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and generally each one of the townsmen found himself facing two or three of Brogan's men. The sheriff's heart was filled with bitterness as he crouched with Tonto back of an overturned wagon. I brought this on myself. If I hadn't listened to that friend of yours, this would never have happened. Keep gun going, Sheriff. I'm not letting her get cold, dad ratted crooks. It's a case of get as many of them as we can before they get us, which they'll do sooner or later. That masked man let us down, that's what he did. He said he'd stay with us and fight. Not that it would help us much. Here, yeah, there's another. Sheriff, you look that way. Huh? Here come masked man. Well, sure enough, a lot of men are riding with him. It's a bugle. 
tunnel. Tunnel, those are soldiers. <laughs> Here's your chance, boys. Here's the fight you wanted. Fighting was a game those soldiers had learned well. They pitched in eagerly, and every man seemed determined to make amends for the crime that had sent him to the prison camp. The odds were now against the Brogan gang, and soon there were shouts and yells of... <laughs> you hear that, Sheriff? That's the Brogan gang they're sweating. We showed them by thunder. We showed them how to handle outlaws. It was one month later when the warden once again called all the prisoners together. Boys, the work you did in helping capture Brogan and his men has not gone unnoticed. I have here a letter from Washington. It's official and it's long. It applies to every one of you. I'll read the line that really counts. Each man in your charge is given a full and complete pardon. You mean we're not prisoners any longer? We're free? You're free. Now go on and build those homes you've all been dreaming of and give thanks to the Lone Ranger. <laughs> This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendell and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs>